Hello grade 11s, welcome to this lesson on quadratic number patterns. These can also be called quadratic sequences. In a linear number pattern, the variable n is to the power of 1. A quadratic sequence is generated by the formula tn equals a n squared plus b n plus c. The power of n is 2, and this tells us that we have a quadratic formula. So now that we can identify a quadratic sequence, let's look at some examples of these types of sequences. Look at the formula tn equals n squared plus 2. In this sequence, the b term is 0, but the sequence is still quadratic as the highest power is 2. Let's find the first four terms by substitution. We substitute 1, 2, 3, and 4 in place of n in the formula. And we get term 1 equals 3, term 2 is 6, term 3 is 11, and term 4 is 18. Now look at the pattern. 3, 6, 11, 18. Let's see what interesting properties this quadratic pattern has. The difference between term 2 and term 1 is 3 between term 3 and term 2 is 5, and between term 4 and term 3 is 7. There is no constant first difference as with linear number patterns. Now if we take the difference between these terms, we see that we now have a constant second difference of 2. A quadratic sequence is a sequence of numbers in which the second difference between consecutive terms is constant. This is called a common second difference. Let's look at an example. Find the common second difference of the quadratic sequence 4, 9, 16, 25. First, we need to work out the first difference between the terms. These are 5, 7, and 9. Now we need to work out the second difference between these terms and get a constant second difference of 2. Now that we know how to work out the second difference, let's use this skill in the next question. Find the next term in the sequence 4, 9, 16, 25. This is the same sequence we worked with in the last example. So we know it is a quadratic sequence with a common second difference of 2. To work out the next term, we work upwards from the second difference. To get to the next term in the first difference, we must add 2, since the difference between these terms is 2. So the next term of the first difference is 11. To get to the next term in the quadratic sequence, we add the first difference to the previous term. For example, term 3, which is 16, plus 9, gives us term 4, which is 25. So 25 plus 11 will give us term 5, which is 36. Do you think we could manage another one? OK, let's try this example. Find term 2 in the quadratic sequence. We need to work out the first and second differences to answer this question. Since term 2 is unknown, let's work from term 3 onwards. 38 minus 23 gives us 15. 57 minus 38 is 19. 80 minus 57 is 23. Now we can work out the second difference by subtracting the terms of the first difference. And we get a constant second difference of 4. We can now work upwards to find the second term in the quadratic sequence. Since the constant second difference is 4, we subtract 4 from 15 to give us the previous term in the first difference and get 11. To get terms to the left of the first difference, we have to subtract. And to get terms to the right of the first difference in the quadratic sequence, we must add. So to get term 2, we subtract 11 from 23 and get 12. Next, we will look at an example where we are given the general term of the quadratic sequence and have to find the position of a term in the sequence. Given the general term tn equals 3n squared 
plus 2n plus 1. First find the hundredth term and then find n when tn equals 57. To find any term in a sequence, when you are given the general term, you simply replace n with the term's position in the sequence. To find term 100, replace n with 100, and you get 3 times 10,000 plus 2 times 100 plus 1, which is equal to 30,201. This means that the 100th term has a value of 30,201. Next, we will need to find which term in the sequence has a value of 57. So we are looking for the position of a term in the sequence. In other words, we are looking for the value of n. Since we are given tn, we replace tn in the general term with the value of 57 and solve for n. We take the 57 to the left-hand side and we now have a quadratic equation of 3n squared plus 2n minus 56 equals 0. We need to factorize the quadratic equation and solve for n. Our factors are 3n plus 14 and n minus 4, letting each bracket equal 0. We get n equals negative 14 over 3, or n equals 4. n can only be a whole number. This means that it cannot be a negative number and it cannot be a fraction. Therefore, n can only be equal to 4. This means that the fourth term in the sequence has a value of 57. Thank you for joining us, Grade 11s. Remember to look at the tasks for this section in the Number Patterns task video. You'll also be able to learn more about number patterns on our website, www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.